My lords, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I would like to say a sincere thank you to the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust and to my sponsor, the Thomas Henry Foundation, for allowing me this truly fantastic once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to complete a Nuffield scholarship about a topic very close to my heart. Does the family dairy farm have a future? I would also like to express my sincere thanks to my employer, Caffrey, for accommodating my scholarship. Thanks to my family for dealing with the extra workload during my periods of travel, especially to my wife, Barbara, for her continued patience and perseverance, particularly while navigating through the USA and assisting with report writing. Having spent my lifetime living and working on the family farm and working with many other dairy farmers through my job as an advisor, I've always had a great passion for the dairy industry. I have always enjoyed traveling and learning about agriculture in other countries. My family have been farming in this area of County Tyrone for generations. My parents bought the farm in 1974, started milking cows on it in 1980 and have gradually developed it over the years. Northern Ireland is a unique part of the UK for many reasons, including small, fragmented family farms, land is largely rented on a conacre basis, and dependence on exporting 85% of its dairy produce, leading to market volatility. My scholarship was about finding out what components will help maintain the future viability of family dairy farms. To do this, I traveled to the UK, Germany, Denmark, Ireland, the USA, China, and France. I will now highlight a few examples from these countries. One of the first questions I was asked on my travels, what is a family farm? I had always considered a family farm to be that of a 100 cow dairy herd, which is managed by one or two family members and maybe with a couple more on a part-time basis. However, I encountered many different types of family dairy farms on my travels. One such example being the four Crave brothers from Wisconsin. They teamed up together in 1978 to rent a 57 cow dairy farm then went on to purchase their first farm in 1982. Today, they're still farming together in a partnership with members of the next generation, each having key roles within the farm and cheese business, only on a much larger scale. Is this still a family farm? Just a short time into my USA travels, I met Dr. Gordy Jones, a vet and partner at the 4200 Central Sands Dairy in Wisconsin. He told me how he classified dairy farmers into four different groups. Sunset, no successor, no significant debt, average farm performance, and I was quite happy to coast along until whatever time he decided to retire. Lifestyle farmers, the chosen that way of life. Partner may work off farm, a good place to raise a family, and the use of robotics to reduce labour. Niche, diversified added value to supplement the farm income may have looked at pedigree genetics, stock sales, ice cream, yogurt, cheese production, organic or even farm shop. Finally, commodity producer. Their sole focus was on milk production, managed like a corporate type business and profit driven. High degree of technical efficiency, progressive and may carry significant debt. Having attended this group a number of times, I was always impressed with its progressive nature and forward thinking of its members. In fact, it was one of the reasons that inspired me to apply for a scholarship. So where better to start my travels than with the group in Shropshire and look at the various options to access land for expansion, something which is very difficult to do under the current Conacre system in Northern Ireland. Germany, Europe's largest milk producer, has a diverse political and agricultural history. The map illustrates the average dairy herd size in the different regions of the country. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, many farmers from other regions of Germany moved east, where they grasped the opportunity to develop and grow their farm business. I visited former collective state farms in eastern Germany to see how many of them have transitioned into large-scale, efficient family dairy farms. By contrast, southern Germany is still made up of many small-scale family dairy farms. These farms have had to adapt and innovate to ensure their future viability. 
I visited two neighbouring Fleckfee dairy farms which had diversified. One with a 250 kilowatt biogas plant that piped the heat across the road to a purpose-built firewood processing building which was used to dry out the logs. The other used a mobile milking platform to allow the cows to graze the pasture over the summer months. This milk was then processed on the farm, marketed in local shops and through the farm shop and vending machines. They also finished and sold their own organic beef as well as certified organic seed. The number of dairy farms in Denmark has almost halved in the last 10 years to the current 3,400. Those that have remained in business have done so by increasing output, with the majority of farms producing in excess of 1 million litres of milk per annum. This is Dick, who milks 300 cows with a herd average of 11,000 litres. Like some other farmers that I visited in Denmark, Dick had moved from the Netherlands in the early 1990s. These farmers saw Denmark as the land of opportunity, with sizable blocks of good quality and affordable land. They had a positive attitude and ambition to grow their business. Good labour efficiency was also evident in all the farms, particularly on this 1,500 head beef unit, where both feeding and bedding were entirely automated, meaning only one and a half labour units were needed to run the farm. County Cork is the largest dairying county in Ireland, producing 25% of the country's milk. It, along with the rest of the country, had one of the most restrictive quota regimes in Europe, which limited expansion. During this time, they devised a low-cost, grass-based dairying system with a real focus on profitability, ideally suited to the temperate climate, moderate rainfall and free draining soils. Now, in the post-quota era, they are in expansion mode, while still keeping the focus on the low cost of production. The USA, the world's largest milk producer, with a focus on scale and efficiency. However, 97% of the farms are still family owned and operated. In 2006, the Elliott family left a 150 cow dairy herd in County Fermanagh to start a new life in South Dakota. They started off with a 160 acre block of land on which a 2,000 cow unit was built. Recently, a second unit has been constructed and they currently have 4,500 cows. But this is still very much a family affair, with the next generation taking on various responsibilities within the business. Wisconsin, known as America's Dairyland, is the second largest milk producing state in the USA. It prides itself on its family farm structure. But again, the number of dairy farms have fallen from 22,500 in to the current 9,500. However, it is also the state that has had the largest increase in milk output over the past 10 years. James and Robert Beowulf are the third generation to farm the land their grandfather bought in 1946. Starting with a herd of 50 cows in their 90s, in the 90s. Today they have a 450 cow conventional herd and a 250 cow organic herd. They also felt they needed to innovate and develop niche markets. This led to the opening of the Sassy Cow Creamery in 2008, producing a range of milk and ice cream products as well as a partnership with a local artisan cheesemaker. Pennsylvania State is known for its tourism and Amish community. However, Bob Fox was able to use this to his advantage. Bob is the second generation to farm the 120 acres that was bought in 1960. Some of the land was used to grow tobacco, but th this came to an end in the early 80s when the dairy herd was expanded to the current 80 cows. In 2012, when a neighbouring farm came up for sale, Bob hoped to buy it so his two sons could join the business, but this was not to be the case. The land was too expensive and the bank would not lend him the money. In 2015, after spending several years researching options, the family pulled their resources, retrained and developed an ice cream parlour on a site next to the farm. Today, all the family members are involved in the business, which now includes a cafe and a shop selling local produce. China, the most populous country in the world and the third largest dairy producer, is still going through a transition period as a result of the 2008 melamine scandal. The small backyard farms with five cows or less milked in the local village milk centres that once produced the majority of the milk in China are rapidly disappearing, largely because of government influence. 
These farms have fallen out of favour. They took the brunt of the blame for the 2008 scandal. The preference is now for larger family type farms, or indeed several of them joining together to form a cooperative. This is a 180 cow family dairy farm in the most northern province bordering Russia. The farmer has plans in place to expand to 300 cows, but accessing land and quality feed are two big issues. The cows are milked three times per day. They were averaging 30 litres, with the milk being sold on an annual liquid contract to Manu, the second largest processor in China. Due to all operations being fairly labour intensive, 11 people were employed in this farm. Meal is generally bought in 50 kilo sacks, regardless of farm size, and manually loaded onto an elevator to fill the diet feeder. Due to government incentives and the desire for self-sufficiency in recent years, there has been a boom in the number of large-scale corporate type dairies being built by investors. Many of these are designed for 10,000 head of dairy stock, will use two 80-point rotary parlours side by side to milk in the region of six to 7,000 dairy cows. These are managed very much on the USA style total confinement system, but they are still some way off achieving the same performance. I think this statement best sums up the current situation in China. The dairy industry is trying to advance 50 to 100 years in the space of 10 to 15 years. France. The French dairy industry is still very much geared towards the family dairy farm, with an average herd size of 58 cows. Government permission is needed if expanding to over 200 cows. Collaboration with other farmers has been key when expanding or diversifying. This particular farm has three business partners, which resulted in a 210 hectare farm with 160 dairy cows, a 350 kilowatt biogas plant, wood chip drying facilities and photovoltaic panels. While expansion has taken place, this was not at the cost of lifestyle, which is highly valued on even dairy farms. Yes, there is a future for some family dairy farms, but not for all. This cannot be taken for granted. Success will depend on having a positive attitude, being business-minded, showing innovation, improving efficiencies, manageable expansion, if appropriate, and grasping opportunities when they arise. However, Family farms have the resilience and the work ethic not found on the larger corporate type farms. Finally, I would like to leave you with this picture on a farm I was visiting in Minnesota. Uh, an Amish father and son with 15 cows visited their neighbor. They were actually there to buy a couple of bull calves from them. The neighbor had 1,200 cows. Both make enough money to rear a family and most importantly, both are happy. So is there a right and wrong in terms of dairy farm size? Thank you.